Hello, this is Les Redach, Ethiopia. Good morning. Today we'll talk about Cushing syndrome. And I want you to differentiate two things, Cushing syndrome from Cushing's disease. Cushing syndrome is called so in our body. Cushing's disease is a CTH creating pituitary tumor. Pituitary tumor. So when you have a tumor in your pituitary and it's secreting a corticotropic hormone, it's called Cushing's disease. Clinical symptoms that we see because of increased cortisol in our body is called Cushing's syndrome. So Cushing's disease can be a cause of Cushing's syndrome because ACTH by itself can stimulate the production of cortisol. But Cushing's disease is not the only uh, cause of Cushing's syndrome. So Cushing's syndrome is kind of broader topic than Cushing's disease. So I want you to differentiate Cushing's syndrome from Cushing's disease. Let's talk about a little bit of anatomy. The adrenal gland has two parts has an outer cortex and internal medulla so the medulla is represented by this little red box and the cortex has three parts which are represented by top boxes up there so the three parts are zoma zona glomerulosa zona fasciculata and zona reticularis so it's gfr from top to bottom from outside to inside it's zona glomerulosa fasciculata and reticularis the renal medulla secrets norepinephrine and epinephrine it's in, under control of the sympathetic nervous system the sympathetic nervous system no, so let's talk about the adrenal cortex which are three parts are, like i said the zona glomerulosa will secrete the glomerulocorticoids glomerulocorticoids fasciculata secretes glucocorticoids reticularis secretes the androgens. androgens so one of the main mineral corticals in our body is aldosterone one of the main glucocorticoid is cortisol and androgen like testosterone so the two hormones that the internal to the cortisol production and androgen production are under the control of adrenocortropin hormone from the anterior pituitary and aldosterone is part of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, which is stimulated by angiotensin 2. So the production of angiotensin 2 will stimulate the production of aldosterone. And it's under control of angiotensin, it's part of the RAS system. But glucocorticoids and androgen are under control of ACTH from anterior pituitary. So we talk about increased production of cortisol in our body. The symptoms that we see in Cushing syndrome. So Cushing syndrome is symptoms because of increased cortisol production in our body. So let's dive into our clinical um, presentations of uh, Cushing syndrome. Before we do that, I want to mention the hypothalamic pituitary and adrenal access into controlling the cortisol production in our body. So the hypothalamus will release corticotropin releasing hormone, which stimulates the anterior pituitary to make more ACTH. ACTH, ACTH is um, made from a uh, substrate called propyl melanocortin and this substrate will be used to make ACTH and site stimulating hormone as well. So I want you to know the fact that anterior pituitary when it makes ACT ACTH it will use propyl melanocortin and propyl melanocortin will make ACTH and melanocyte stimulating hormone and then ACTH will stimulate the adrenal cortex to make more cortisol. So when you have a lot of cortisol in your body, when you have a lot of cortisol in your body, physiologically cortisol would uh, inhibits the anterior pituitary and the hypothalamus. When you have when you have a lot of it in your body, it will inhibit the production of ACTH and CRH from hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary. Increased cortisol. Increased cortisol. What is its effect in your body? What's its effect in your body? Let's talk about. Let's talk about arterioles. Arterioles. On arterioles, there is alpha-1 receptors, sympathetic receptors, alpha-1 receptors. So what cortisol, increased cortisol in our body does to these alpha-1 receptors, will, it will make them more sensitive to norepinephrine and epinephrine effects. And also aldosterone can bind to aldosterone receptors, aldosterone receptors in our arterioles. So remember that. Then let's talk about fibroblasts. Fibroblasts. And so uh, increased cortisol in our body is supposed to decrease fibroblast activation and collagen synthesis. So fibroblast activation and collagen synthesis. What about in adipocytes? Adipocytes. 
increased cortisol is supposed to increase adipocyte size and production of more fatty acids and we'll talk about its effect on liver and it will increase lipolysis lipolysis and it will this will increase amount of free fatty acids in our body as well <coughs> the other effect of cortisol is it's a hyperglycemic hormone it's hyperglycemic hormone it will stimulate gluconeo gluconeo Genesis. Gluconeogenesis is production of new glucose from pre-existing substrates in our liver. So it will increase um, gluconeogenesis and it's going to increase lipolysis so this, and uh, proteolysis. So breakdown of lip, uh, lipids and proteins are stimulated by uh, cortisol release and the substrates or the products of this uh, lipolysis and proteolysis can be used in making new glucose so it will increase the amount of glucose in our body. What about the immune system? Immune system, uh, cortisol is supposed to decrease WBC migration. If you have an injury to any site, cortisol will decrease WBC migration. Leukocyte can access to that area. The other effect of uh, cortisol in our body is on nuclear factor kappa beta. This NFKB is inflammation, inflammatory transcription factor is supposed to aid in, in TNF alpha response and uh, synthesis of inflammatory mediators. So synthesis of inflammatory mediators. So because NFKB is decreased, TNF alpha response is reduced and inflammatory mediators will not be produced as much. So the other effects are increased eosinophils, lymphocytes and interleukin to when you have increase in cortisol in our body what about the bones the bones on the bones in cortisol will decrease osteoclast activation so osteoclast will be deactivated and we don't have uh, we, we don't have as effective a newborn form if we have hypercortisolism in our body so the other effect is on our glucocorticoid uh, or cortisol release it's supposed to decrease again gonadotropic releasing hormone production and this will in turn decrease the production of luteinizing hormone and FSH production FSH production so this will uh, decrease gonadotropic releasing hormone from the hypothalamus and antitrypsy will have a decrease in test of luteinizing hormone and FSH. The symptoms of uh, Cushing syndrome are dependent on the effects of cortisol in each and uh, every part of our body like I mentioned earlier. So on arterioles, like I said, it will increase sensitivity to norepinephrine and epinephrine and it will also bind to uh, aldosterone receptors and make them more active. So this all will cause patients to be hypertensive. So patients with Cushing syndrome will have hypertension. Um, the other is fibroblast activation is decreased and fibroblast activity is low. So they have thin skin, thin skin, skin is so thin and they have poor wound healing, poor wound healing. The other thing about thin skin is that the epidermis will stretch in. It will have spaces in between so it will stretch and it will have spaces in between in between these spaces you can see blood vessels in under the epidermis like dermal blood vessels dermal blood vessels and blood will be seen um, because of the thinning of the skin and because of the stretching because the, we, our skin is so thin so it's called stri stri so patients with Cushing syndrome will have to try because the skin is so stretchy and you can see dermal blood vessels under the epidermis. The other is on adipocytes, it's supposed to increase in, in size and uh, there's going to be a lot of free fatty acids. So because of the adipocytes increase in size, there will be fat depositions in abnormal places, fat depositions. So if you have seen patients with Cushing syndrome, they'll have moon faces and buffalo humps, humps. Uh, adipocyte size increase in free fatty acid production that they have a deposition in abnormal places this is one of the symptoms and the other thing is it's hyperglycemic hormone so they have increased in glucose amount in our body so this will make them resistant to insulin so they have insulin resistance and they are prone to um, acquiring diabetes they have 
diabetes and some stuff. So the immune system is affected in many ways. You will have be de decreased WBC chemotactis and nuclear factor kappa beta, which is the inflammatory transcription factor, which will be inhib inhibited. And they have eosinophilia and lymphopenia, and interleukin production will be decreased also. We will be decreased to master master cell and granulation in stem release. So this will all will make them immunosuppressed. Immunosuppressed, they will be immunosuppressed in um, Cushing syndrome. The other thing is on board the uh, osteoclaster activity, and because of this, they will have osteoporotic, osteoporotic, they will have weak bones, so they will have fractures. Fractures are so common in Cushing syndrome. The other thing is because of decrease in JNRH synthesis and decrease in lysinuric hormone and FSH production from anterior pituitary patients with uh, Cushing syndrome. If they are women, they may have oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea. And if they are male, they may have erectile dysfunction. And also because of decrease in lysinuric in FSH production, they may be hirsute. Hirsute is or abnormal hair growth in abnormal places is a common finding in Cushing syndrome. All in all, patients with Cushing syndrome are supposed to be, uh, they will have symptoms of hypertension, thin skin, poor wound healing, and strea, and they have abnormal fat deposition, and they are prone to insulin resistance and diabetes mellitus, and they are immunosuppressed, and they will be having weak bones, and there will be oligomenorrhea, amenorrhea, erectile dysfunction, and hirsutism. So these are the symptoms of Cushing syndrome. So I hope I made Cushing syndrome more clear. And on the next video, I will talk about how to diagnose Cushing syndrome, how to measure the amount of cortisol in our body. And until then, goodbye, and thank you very much. And this is Lafredo Chitipia.